I enjoy cutting this. This is uh, this is waste. This this rejected peat brush is waste. I've been cutting this up for an hour this morning. I had a thoroughly good time doing this. I would rather do this than play tennis or golf or anything that you can mention. And I certainly would rather do this than watch television or listen to neighboring gossip about nothing in particular. I had a real, I had a real nice time. Fresh air, sunshine, costumes. No, no extra charge. This is the good life. This is a good life. And as far as I'm concerned, I, there isn't anything that you can offer me. If you offer me a, a, a large sum of money and say, here's such and such a sum of money, buy yourself what you want. And my answer is, there's nothing I want. There's nothing I need. My food needs are met. My food needs needs are met. My housing needs are met. My clothing needs are met. My needs for fuel in the winter time are being met in this process. Uh, there isn't anything that we want. All right, friends. Welcome back to the sawmill. It's Saturday, and I'm still sawing up some of this ash here. I got about a thousand feet to saw. I'm not going to video all that, it's kind of the same thing over and over again, but I do have something to talk about today guys that might help some of you people out there that are either new to saw milling or you've been into it for a decent amount of time but you never have thought about this. This is something I didn't even do for the first two or three years of saw milling and the main reason was I wasn't even aware of how to do it or the purpose behind it. So maybe this will help some of you guys out. So we got a nice log here on the sawmill. This is ash. It's about eight and a half feet long, limited knots. It's pretty high grade actually as far as the uh, defects on it. And what we're gonna do on this one is saw it for grade. Now what does that mean? That means sawing lumber or boards or, you know, if you're doing slabs or whatever, you can grade saw any thickness you want to. But grade sawing means getting the best, clearest board that you can with limited knots or defects or anything that's gonna make it look bad. You want nice, clear boards. And uh, it's not as hard as you think, actually. Even with a real knotty log, you can figure out how to get the best boards out of it. Now this is a good example here of a nice log where it's not really that hard. There's a really big defect over here, and we'll look at that here in just a second on the underside of it. Looks like an old knot or something that was going on there. There's a bulge on the very bottom of the timber. But besides that, I'm not seeing any defects here. And with grade sawing, there's probably a bunch of different ways out there that people do this. And my way is not the best way or the only way, but it always has worked for me. And what you want to do is, is pick your best face, look at your whole log all the way around, look for any hidden knots or hidden defects or signs of rot. You know, anything you can see that's going to stand out to you. Pick the best face, decide how wide you want your boards to be, or at least kind of guess. Get a good example on this log right here. Uh, the dammer is about 18 inches on the small end. I'm hoping for about 10 inch wide boards here. That's really my goal. What I'll hopefully do here on the first cut is open up about a 10 inch face and that's also going to be my best face that I want to saw from. So what you do is when you find your best face you go ahead and turn that face up and that's the way I do it. And I'll go ahead and make one cut on that face, I'll flip it 180, I'll take my lumber crayon and put a little chet mark pointing toward that face because sometimes you forget when you start flipping this log around where you started at. And we'll flip it 180, make another cut, and then make two more cuts and get a square cant. Go back to that original face, and as long as it looks okay and clear when I opened it up, I'll go ahead at that point and start making my boards. Uh, today, this will be five quarter on the thickness. But something you wanna do, and that's what we're gonna do right here today, guys, when you have a large knot like this, or multiple knots, or, or whatever, you wanna turn the log, if possible, so that knot will be on the edge of the board. And when you do that, you may have to flip it over the other way because that face may not be favorable to you. And sometimes when you do that, the face you're looking at still ain't the best face, but you're getting rid of that knot. So you kind of have to compromise sometimes because you don't want to, you know, you don't want to pick the best face then have that knot be directly, you know, directly 180 under it because then you're going to saw right down into that knot. When you get past the pith, your, your boards past that point will probably have a knot right in the middle. So you kind of have to feed your, your losses right there. But sometimes, you know, you can also just take those boards and cut them in half. 
Now there's so many different variables here. You really got to play with this idea and this concept to really get a good uh, understanding of it and develop your own method. Now what I do is I put that knot on the side. I'll take a look. If it looks good, I'm good to go. If I don't like what I'm seeing, I'll flip it to this side and so forth. But judging by this log, and it's so clear, that's one good thing about ash. It grows nice and straight and free of knots most of the time until you start getting up into the canopy. And this one here is really nice, but this bulge down here will probably be a problem. I'm gonna put it on the outside edge when I turn it toward me, and uh, hopefully that will take care of the problem. So that's the general concept here. You want boards that are as wide as you want to get them. You know, if you want one by sixes, one by tens, what have you. With ash, I'm not really concerned with width. If this was black walnut, I'd be wanting to get as wide as possible because that's the best money. With ash, not so much on the width. One by sixes, one by tens, it's all about the same money after your kiln dried. But this method here will make you a better sawyer, especially if you're sawing lumber that you're going to run through a kiln for cabinet makers, for woodworkers. You know, even if you're out doing portable sawmill work for a customer and he's wanting some siding, take that extra time, look at your timber, get your knots lined up on the outside so they can be edged off later if need be, and uh, make clear lumber, you know. That's what we're after here, because a knot is a defect. Some people like them, some people don't. I'm not a big fan of knots. I'll have to get rid of them if I can, but sometimes there's no way around it. So uh, I guess that's probably as clear as mud. I hope that's a good understanding there of sawing for grade. It will make more sense to you, hopefully, once we start opening up this ash and getting into it. Let's turn this timber with the knot facing you guys, and we'll take a look and see what we got to work with. And uh, another thing, I don't worry about taper when I do this kind of sawing. I'll try to take the taper out if I can. I'm not real concerned with it. I'm more concerned with sawing parallel to the bark on my best face, and the pith, you don't even worry about it, guys. I try to square up the pith when I get my cant and I'll auto down and try to get it inside of one board. But if the pith is on different uh, measurements from both ends, if it's 10 inches here and 12 inches over here, don't be concerned with that. You know, when it comes to grade saw and the pith, you don't really think about that because those boards that have the pith in them, you know, when you're grade sawing, they're gonna be run through a kiln for high-end woodworkers, they'll cut the pith out anyways. So just keep sawing if you can and don't even think about that. So, let's flip it over and see what we got. All right, get that flipped over. Okay. Just about, about another quarter turn and we'll have it where we want it. And that face looks pretty good so far. Limited notch right there, if any. All right. That's pretty good right there. Let's clamp it down and take a look. All right, friends, I think we're gonna get lucky right there on the first turn. This looks pretty good right here. I don't see any defects at all on the top side. No visible knots. That doesn't mean there's not going to be any. You might saw into this and find some knots two or three cuts down. You just gotta hope for the best on these logs, guys. It's like Christmas, you know. You never know what you're gonna find when you open them up. You know, that's good and bad. You know, most of the time it's nice figure, but sometimes it's a big cluster of knots from when the tree was young. It's hard to tell. And facing you guys right there is that large knot. It's more of a bulge coming out. This was probably a large limb coming off this tree a long time ago. And who knows why it fell off, either by nature or who knows why. And the tree has kind of healed itself. You know, you can tell that on a lot of this timber here. Sometimes you'll see a you know, bulge like this on the side of a log and you'll find a knot hole right in the middle of it. Which means the tree's kind of uh, healed itself over from where that knot used to be. And uh, one reason this probably did not come back, the tree was probably growing straight because this is a nice straight log. And the canopy was probably getting pretty high and I had to fight for sunlight because these came from a dense forest locally here. So the branch was unable to really grow back because of that reason right there. The canopy probably just got too tall and no sunlight was hitting this side right here. So let's open this one up. This is ash. It did come from Northeast Tennessee. It was dead standing. 
and it was killed by the emerald ash borer beetle. So uh, a lot of that going on around here. A lot of ash timber is going away sooner than later. But we'll try to save as many as we can here. We got about a thousand feet here delivered a few months ago and uh, hopefully we get some nice five quarter boards out of this and put it in the kiln. Good stuff guys, good stuff. I love saw and ash, it saws up really well. So stick with us guys, let's see if my little strategy pays off here or we open this up on the top and there's knots everywhere. You know, you never know, but we should be okay. Famous last words there, we should be okay. guys check it out that's what was underneath that defect right there and that goes in about three inches so that's why you take your time on grade sawing and make sure you put these on the edge now, it's not a total loss here we'll have some nice lumber you know this is the side of the board so i have some nice boards up here and down here and on these boards, we'll just have to edge that off either before or after kiln drying. But we'll still be able to get some decent boards right here on these that fall into this hole right here. We'll just have to edge those off. We'll probably get one by sixes out of it. So we'll go ahead now and turn this over 180 and get that last cut off the bottom. Then we'll square this thing up and make some five quarter boards. We'll see how these look when we start sawing down into this. Should be pretty interesting. But something to also note here, besides that defect right there, this log is really nice. It's really clear on all sides right here. It looks really good. But I had, and now I've got the best of friends. These are the best times of our lives. We're 
Picking tunes and getting stoned One day our kids are gonna pass us on by And we'll be packed away on a shelf and long gone It's tough, I won't lie Yes, I can barely pay the rent But you can tell it when you look me in the eyes That I'll make it Cause I've got the best of friends These are the best times of our lives We're living life through a song